My guest is Jeff Fry. Jeff played in the major leagues for the Rangers, for the Red Sox, for the Blue Jays. You may know him now, though, because of social media. And uh, Jeff, thank you for joining us. And tell me a little bit about this sort of social media following that you've generated and why you have it. Yeah, uh, purely by accident, purely by accident. Um, I'm on a group text with a couple scouts and one former scout, and we see a lot of these things on on social media that uh, some of these hitting gurus are, are teaching kids, and we kind of poke fun at it and send it to each other and get a good laugh. And So one day I had this idea. I saw this video, and I was in the backyard goofing around, and I got this little piece of plastic and got my oldest son, Cannon, to video me. It's like a 12-second video. And I put it on Twitter, and a few minutes later, he goes, man, you got 400 views. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I hadn't really been on social media much. And then an hour later, he goes, dude, you got 4,000 views. I was like, what are you talking about? And I, I had no idea what was going on. And then I thought, you know, I thought it was pretty funny or whatever. And so that night, I was getting ready for bed, and I looked at my phone. I had all these direct messages from these people I didn't know. And they were horrible. They were, I mean, saying mean, hateful things about me, about my kids. And I was like, man, what is going on here? I didn't, I didn't really know what was going on. And these people don't know me very well. And all they did was inspire me to make another video. And a couple of days later, I made another video. And um, that video got over 100,000 views. And, I was, and at the end of the video, after I hit the ball, I said, she gone like that. And not thinking anything about it. None of the videos are scripted. It's just kind of ad lib. And... One of my friends on social media goes, you need to hashtag she gone. I was like, what does hashtagging mean? Well, I don't even know what, I said, okay. So I hashtag she gone. And then I started making more and more videos and more and more followers and, and more and more hate. And I was like, man, I might be onto something here. And so now I have the she gone movement that uh, <laughs> she gone nation and like over 12,000 followers on Twitter and uh, Instagram and all these different things. Yes, Jeff is the head of state for the Shigon Nation. <laughs> and so the, the nature of this is you are reacting to the way baseball swings are taught. And really not even so much the way baseball swings are taught, but the way hitting is taught and the emphasis that's put on different things. Give us a little more detail on kind of what you were seeing and reacting to. Well, you see in, in the game today, there's all this talk about... Uh, launch angle and exit velocity and things and you know all these measurements that uh, seem to be how we're trying to determine if somebody is a good baseball player or not and I think what's lost in all this is that the guys that we see on television are the best players in the world they can do things that most people cannot do and when I see instructors who basically have no playing background have decided that this is the way that everybody should hit now. Okay, and they're teaching kids, you know, 10, 12 year old kids to hit the ball in the air. And it totally goes against everything I was taught my entire career. And my teammates as well about swinging down through the ball and trying to hit line drives. And now all of a sudden everybody's got to try and hit home runs because that's what's sexy in baseball. And to me, it's doing a horrible disservice to kids that uh, not everybody's 6'6", 250 pounds can drive the ball to the ballpark. I couldn't as a player. I was told not to hit the ball in the air by um, Crawdaddy, our first base coach in Gastonia. Every time I hit the ball in the air, he would go, ah, and he would yell at me. So I prided myself on hitting line drives and ground balls, and that was enough for me to get to the major leagues. So why all of a sudden has everything shifted and now everybody has to hit the ball in the air and try it home runs. And I think that's what we see in, in the game today is, is the game is less action and, and, to be honest, kind of boring. What, uh, and, and so for a kid, is, is part of your point then that not every kid is going to be, not only are they not going to be a major leaguer, they're not going to be like every other kid. And so if you're, if you're trying this one-size-fits-all approach, that's not the way it works, and that's not the way it works in a game either. No, it doesn't. And, and you know, there's few guys, um, some of the teams I played on in my career, we'd have two or three, maybe four guys that were the run producers, the guys that hit the ball with the fence, and the rest of us were supposed to do everything else, move runners, learn to bunt, hit and run, 
hit the ball on the line, hit the ball on the ground and get on base. And now this idea that everybody has to hit the ball in the air, it's just, it makes no sense. And I think um, there's so much failure in the game, even at the highest level now, because that's what everybody's doing. Okay, and these guys are getting paid to do it. Okay, it's not fun when you fail, but when you still get paid, you can accept that. You can deal with it a little easier. When you're a kid, just learning to love the game and you're constantly failing because you're just hitting the ball in the air, eventually you're going to quit because he's, I mean, I played baseball my whole life because it was fun, you know, and I had success um, hitting line drives. And now I see the fly balls that are all being, or the, the launch angle swings being taught to kids. And these kids are going to have so much failure that eventually most of them are going to quit the game and it's not good for the game. I watched a uh, uh, broadcast the other day that Major League Baseball Net MLB Network did, and it was it was it was a basically kind of a, a stats, uh, advanced stats focused broadcast, and it was quite frankly really interesting. But there was a, a uh, and I'm not, certainly not one that dismisses the advanced stats movement. I think there's you know useful things in it, but I was listening to them to discuss whether a pitcher should be taken out after four innings because he was about to go through the lineup for the third time and they showed some stats of you know how he fared in that situation and they weren't they weren't very flattering but I also thought you know what there's a whole lot of other things going on in this game that you have to think about besides that and so you know how's the bullpen rested did a guy twist his ankle shag and flies in batting practice you know th that's your middle reliever all these things that that you have to factor in that you have to get beyond that and in some ways this emphasis makes it, <laughs> you can't rely on that too much. Is that something that you're sort of seeing that people are really kind of trying to almost in some ways oversimplify it? Well, I mean, I think the, the Tampa Bay Rays can attest to that. They pulled down uh, Blake Snell in the sixth inning and breathed life into the Dodgers uh, when he was dealing, you know, and I think it's just, um, too much analysis, okay? And that manager's job used to be to know the pulse of your players, know how this guy's feeling, know if he's confident, the pitching coach talks to him every inning, can tell if he's getting tired, they have these conversations. But so many of these moves now are predetermined, okay? So irregardless that Blake Snell has a one hitter through the sixth inning of game six of the World Series, the third time through the lineup, the team hits better against him of course they do. He's not throwing as hard. I mean, we know that, but you don't know what's inside that guy. This is game six of the World Series. This is important. He's going to step up, and the manager knows the guys that can do that, and the pitching coach knows, and the guys that are sending down the lineups from upstairs don't necessarily know that. Well, and you have to think about everything else that's going on with your team, too. And look, even if you're relying on stats, you got to make sure you're looking at the right stats, mm -hmm. you know, and, and some of that could include if you take your starter out, is your middle reliever going to be better? Yeah. And, and I think it cost the race because they, they were using the same relievers every game. And eventually these guys are going to wear out. These guys generally don't throw every single day. And so a guy who'd give up one run, the entire playoffs or the entire season, I know it's a short season. He gave up a run in every game in the playoffs. And this guy had an ERA under one. So obviously something's changed. It shouldn't just be, well, this guy normally hits good against left-handers. Well, maybe not this left-hander. Mm -hmm. Right, and if you're relying on stats about a, 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 what a pitcher is going to do when he's got normal rest and trying to apply those to when he doesn't have normal rest, you might be relying on the wrong stats, which gets back to what you're saying about you need to look at other things. Yeah, so you have to, you, I mean... There has to be a, a, the managers would have a, the pulse of the players. They would know. They would know if they're getting tired, if they're wearing out, if this guy, you know, there's things that go on outside of the baseball field you don't know about. Maybe this guy got into an argument with his wife before he came to the field that day. Maybe he had a car wreck or maybe his mom is sick. You know, you just don't know these things, but the manager knows or most managers know that people upstairs just crunching numbers and putting together lineups and algorithms don't necessarily know those things. I always thought the Rangers during their World Series years did a really good job of finding the right balance 
because they had uh, some guys in that front office like John Daniels and company that were really good at the stats, but you also had Nolan Ryan and they and and John and his crew clearly respected people like Don Welke, who was an experienced scout, and I always felt like they blended those so well. That to me is where the the true uh, secret sauce lies. I agree, and I don't think you see that anymore. Most of those, the Don Welkies of the world, um, it was a great baseball man. Those guys are being pushed aside for very intelligent guys, Ivy League guys that you know can figure out all this data and analytics stuff, but you still need baseball men in there that know what it's like to step between those lines under pressure and have to perform. And I think we need a blend of that like we used to have, and I think it's too one-sided right now. All right, so thinking, so that was a, an excellent discussion of baseball. Jumping back to your, your uh, Twitter feed and such, what, uh, how have you, What's the process for you coming up with these? You've had some really creative ideas. <laughs> I don't know. I just I just wake up and I'm like, I'm going to make a video today. And I'll go in the backyard and I'll just start thinking about stuff. And I look through my garage at all these gadgets I've acquired over the years and some of the videos I've seen. Most of the stuff, my material now, people send it to me. I used to go research and say, all right, I need to do a video. I haven't done a video in a week and look at some crazy stuff. And But now it's sent to me. And... You know, people say, hey, will you share this? Will you do this? You have so much. Will you promote this? We have a baseball camp. Will you do this? We're, you know, and it's, really, it's really cool. I think the coolest thing is, is that I have so many kids now that, that follow me. And um, one little girl, Lillian Martineau, um, is a freshman in high school. She, uh, she made her JV baseball team as a girl. And she works harder than anybody else that, that I've seen on social media. Another little boy I actually got to talk to yesterday, Jacob Folks, is an 11-year-old boy. And his dad is a huge fan of, of what I'm doing and believes in the old school, doesn't believe in all the select baseball stuff. And Jacob, uh, he, th his dad called me about Jacob and said, um, Jacob loves you. He loves all the stuff you're doing. He made a video imitating me and said, this is Jeff Fry and, and Judy, the hitting guru. He made signs. He did all this stuff. And I was like, I got to send him a picture. He said Jacob was running to the mailbox every day. And he got, sent me a picture of Jacob holding up this picture. And now he wears a she gone hat. And I talked to him yesterday. He just got a scholarship to go into um, his private school. And he's just doing all these things in the community. I mean, it's really cool what is happening. You know you have made it when people are doing parody videos of, yeah. your, of your parody video. Yeah, and it was really good, too. And actually, I'm about to sell a shirt, the, sh the Judy the Hitting Guru shirt, that his, him and his dad came up with a design, and it's going um, to help their baseball league, and it's also going to benefit um, breast cancer. And so I'm going to do that in partnership with them. Well, that's awesome. All right, so tell us, uh, if, if people want to get some of the merchandise that you do have for sale now, tell us where they go. SheGoneHitting.com. She, and they can follow me on Twitter, at O3, J Fry, not zero, but O. Oh, <laughs> I made a mistake when I first got on Twitter eight years ago, and I still have it. And uh, I'm on all the Instagram and Facebook and things like that, too. That's awesome. All right, Jeff, thank you so much for being with us. With Jeff Fry for the Fort Worth Weekly, I'm Rush Olson.